Happy story I can tell you is one time I was only going to buy about like two tabs of acid and uh, I was supposed to get a really good deal for it but as soon as I showed up he said that I could have about seven tabs for the price of only one and I mean you know who else wouldn't really take that deal I mean I, I would definitely take that deal I don't know about y'all so I went ahead and I took the seven tabs and we ended up going back to my girlfriend's house at the time my now ex-girlfriend you know how all that works out suddenly my fucking legs started locking up and I was like oh shit we're in for a wild one for like 150 UG per tab and I took seven of them so that was close to fucking eight to, eight to nine hundred I knew I was really in trouble when her dad came in and just started like talking to us I was okay and then he left and then my brain just kind of like shut off and forgot everything that happened that moment and I just like I kind of turned around and was like who the fuck was that and all of a sudden everything started checkerboarding inside of itself and I became pretty much like a fish lens in the corner of the room and I was watching everything happen but like I was watching people come in and out of the room and my girlfriend was sleeping in the middle of the bed she fell asleep taking care of my dumb ass and then I fucking thought like I embodied her like a nice fire I was like going around the bed on all fours like a wild animal and then finally I sat on the edge of the bed I'm like oh shit and I was sweating I don't even smoke cigarettes but I went and stole one of her mom's cigarettes and I smoked it on the front porch like you know, fucking, yeah, that was that. Hey there, I'm Nimue from Nimue of the Lake, and this is story time. Hey, did I ever tell y'all about that time I got traumatized as a little kid back in the early 90s? Go get your snack and come back. Before I get started, please understand I have full permission to tell this story. I'm just going to leave the names out, because if I tell everybody the names, there will be people that know exactly who I'm talking about. If she wants to reveal herself in the comment section, that's on her, okay? Who's the story? Okay, so back then, this was early 90s, right? My friend down the street got me all excited about wanting to take ballet, tap, jazz, all that good stuff, right? Because she was very, very big in dance. And I, you know, I was very interested in it. And I got, you know, my daddy put me in. It was a whole nother story. I joined dance on behalf of her because she made me want to do it. So we're all sitting in her living room one day. It's me, her, her little brother, maybe the older brother, I can't remember. All I remember is the little brother's face, and that's very important, okay? So she says to me, oh, well, every year you're going to have a dance recital at the end of every year. And I'm like, what? You know, and she said, but don't worry, I got you covered. I've got every record of every recital I've ever had, and we've got a lot of watching to do. And I'm thinking, okay. So she goes in there and go gets a VHS tape. Those of you youngins don't know what that is, go to Google. That goes in a VCR, right? She comes back and says, I've got last year's. And I'm thinking, all right, this is new. You know, this, this is very new. Let, let's get into it. She pops it into the VCR. And the first 10 minutes of this is going very well. We see the recital. Everybody's dancing good. The costumes are fantastic. Nobody's falling. And then all of a sudden, the VHS taste stops. And then we're looking into somebody's bedroom. And I'm thinking, where I know this bedroom from? Man, that thing looks familiar. And as I'm sitting there trying to figure that part out, I see a tan line and a butt go past the camera. It starts to dawn on me what is happening. It doesn't dawn on my friend what is happening. She's standing there in front of the TV with the remote and was like, what is this? What, what's my result? What is this? And I'm, I know what the hell's about to go down. Don't ask me how, but I knew, okay? I looked over there at the brother. When I tell you he was gone out the back door just as fast as he came in, baby, he was gone. Come to find out her mama and daddy had recorded over her recital doing you know what, okay? I was traumatized because I had seen dad's butt, amongst other things. She was mortified, but most hilariously, she was like, I can't believe they did this. They recorded over my recital. And I'm thinking, what do you mean? Like, do you even realize what we just seen? I need to go home is what the hell I need to do. I mean, when I tell you I couldn't even look at her mom and daddy the same after that, honey, I just, every time I walked into her house, I put my head down and ran to her room because I knew damn well. If I was to see them, I was going to bust out laughing, all right? Because I had seen it all. I'd seen it all. Now that I'm older, I can appreciate the spice in their marriage, right? And that's a blessing. But when I say I was traumatized from this, baby, I was traumatized. I really was. Oh, my God. <laughs> you think the parents would have been a little bit smarter to not cover up their daughter's dance recital? <laughs> but who am I to judge, you know? <laughs> anyway, next one. Funny story time. So my little brother stays with my mom. And my mother told him to get a job. So he says, there's no one hiring. So my mom set him up for a job, filled out the application, and got him an interview. 
So my little brother got a bright idea to just go in there and give them all the wrong answers. Why should we hire you at this company? Because I need a new pair of Jordans. Who referred you to this company? My mama set this up. I didn't even fill out the application. He was giving them all types of wrong answers. Things you should not say in the interview. And guess what happened? This company still hired him. What? 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 Can you believe it? They still hired him. They knew that it was my mom who set him up on the interview because they knew that he'd like to sit on his lazy ass. So as he was walking out of the interview room, my uncle says, see you Monday. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Are you telling me your uncle was the one holding the interview? <laughs> I mean, it's cool he got a job. I mean, I'm sure he didn't think so, but it's kind of cool. <laughs> I literally can't believe I haven't told you guys this. This is my most fucking embarrassing story, and I didn't really remember it because I think I blocked it out until a brand reached out to me wanting me to promote their edibles. And oh my god, I need to tell you guys. So I don't sleep. I literally have to take something every night to sleep. So when I sleep over at a guy's house, normally I have loose pills in my purse, medicated pills that I'll take to go to bed. But I didn't this night. So he was like, oh, I have like THC gummies that you can go to bed there for sleeping. And I was like, oh, like I haven't tried that before. But yeah, like people do that all the time. That's totally fine. And I, mind you, I do not smoke often he hands me them and he's like oh you'll probably only need one but here just take the thing like keep it by your bedside whatever so i take one and he is falling asleep but i'm wide awake still because they take a while to work and i forget that i take one so about 15 minutes later i take another one because i'm like oh I, I should take that so i can go to bed and then about 20 minutes later i'm like oh fuck i should take that so i can go to bed edibles take like about an hour to hit so i'm laying there thinking not a big deal whatever and then all of a sudden all of a sudden, babe, I start to forget how to breathe. So I'm laying there like, how the fuck do you breathe? Like I have to think about every breath. And so I start to panic. I'm like, I need to go to the hospital. Like I'm having an anxiety attack. I forget how to breathe. I, I can't fucking function. I don't want to wake this man up because I don't want him to think I'm a little bitch. So I just am like having a panic attack silently by myself forgetting how to breathe so i'm like just kind of holding my breath on accident and then i start to shake because i'm not fucking breathing and it wakes him up and all of a sudden he looks up he sits up and he's like are you okay like are you good do you need anything do you need water and i sit up and i just vomit all over him all all over this poor man but it doesn't end there i don't just vomit on him i vomit all over his room all over his bed and all over his dog so I just get up and I walk outside as fast as I can for somebody who can't fucking breathe. And I'm sitting outside on a lawn chair sobbing. You know, like when little kids throw up and they start to cry, that's what I was doing. I was like hyperventilating being like, I want my mommy. I can't breathe. I need to go to the hospital. He comes out and he is like, okay, what can we do? What can we do? Trying to calm me down. I'm still vomiting and I had seafood. So it was like not, not pleasant by any means. And I assume what he did next was go get the hose to wash his dog off, not me. But as soon as I saw the garden hose, I was like, clean me off. Like, I clean me off. I can't go inside like this. So he's spraying me down with the hose and I'm like, I'm still wearing clothes. Like, I need to get out of these clothes. So I just start stripping butt ass naked while sobbing and throwing up, stating I need to go to the hospital. I'm butt ass naked on a lawn chair trying to like regroup. Having an existential crisis. Like, the things I were saying, like, I wouldn't even say to my therapist. And this poor man just stood out there with me for probably like two and a half hours while I threw the biggest bitch fit of my whole life. And I'd like to say I wouldn't try edibles again, but I know myself and I will. And I'll probably have the same experience, but I'll try them again after that too. I just don't ever learn my lesson. I don't know how to honestly respond to this without having to plead the fifth. So all I'm gonna say <laughs> is maybe you shouldn't represent that brand. <laughs> I was talking to my mom the other day and I was like, who was your maid of honor? Cause I didn't know. And I expected her to say someone I knew. And she goes, oh, you don't know her. And I'm like, why? She was like, because I don't talk to her anymore. And I'm like, why not? She goes, I actually don't know. I have not seen her since the year after our wedding. I was like, tell me everything. This tea is 35 years old and it's the most piping hot tea I've ever heard. So my parents got married young. Like my mom was 20, my dad's 23. They have this couple that are their best friends. Let's call them Patty and Dino. I don't know if that's her real name, but I think that is his real name. Patty's my mom's maid of honor. So maybe a year after they get married, they all go to Florida together and they're staying at my grandparents' condo. So the first night 
they go out to a bar on the beach and they have a great time. Like my parents remember it as like a memorable fun night. Anyway, next morning they wake up and Patty is not talking to my mom. And although my mom thought this was weird, she didn't read too much into it because she's like, ah, oh, whatever, maybe everybody was just severely hungover. So that couple wasn't trying to hang out with my parents that day. So my parents said, fuck them, let's go to Disney. So my parents drive to Orlando, they go to Disney for a couple nights and they get back. Patty still isn't talking to my mom. And Dino's not talking to my mom either, but Dino is talking to my dad. Patty's talking to no one. So they go to the beach, Dino and my dad are talking. No one's speaking to my mom, minus my dad. At one point, I guess my parents are like, okay, we're gonna go get lunch, do you wanna come? And they're like, no, we're good. And by them, I mean Dino said, no, we're good, to my dad. So they go for lunch, when they get back, the second they get back, the other couple stands up and goes for lunch. So my mom's like, okay. They get back from lunch and then my parents go, okay, we're gonna go back to the condo. And Dino says to my dad, oh, we're gonna stay here for a little bit longer. My dad says, okay, I'll come pick you up at four o'clock at this street, because it's 1989, whatever, just meet me at this. My parents go back to the condo. My mom says to my dad, I'm gonna pick them up from the beach. And my dad's like, okay. Dad goes and takes a nap at four o'clock. My mom goes to the beach and they're both standing there. They see it's my mom without saying a word. Both of them get into the back seat of the car. So my mom's now driving them around like a taxi driver. So now in her head, she's irate. She's also insane. So on the way back to my condo, there's a roundabout and she starts going in circles around the roundabout. She goes around the roundabout like 15 times because she's like, surely they will break this silence to say, what the fuck are you doing? You've been driving in circles for 10 minutes, but no, they don't say a word. So they get back to the condo and my mom literally gets out of the car and looks at them and says, pack your shit, Lou's taking you to the airport. And they start freaking out, which is hilarious. So they're freaking out. She starts crying. They're like, Christine. She's like, nope, pack everything. You're loud. Goes into the room. My dad's asleep. She goes, wake up. I kicked them out of the condo. And apparently she was laughing too. My dad's like, what? And he, she's like, I kicked them out of the condo and you have to drive them to the airport. My dad's like, what the fuck? So he wakes up from a nap. He goes out and Dino's going, Lou, I'm sorry. Like my wife, you know, she can be like a little funny sometimes. My dad's like, yeah, sorry, man. Like if she says you gotta go, like now the wife's on the patio sobbing. She's asking my dad if she can apologize to my mom. And my mom is <laughs> inside going, no, get in the fucking car. My parents take them to the airport. 1989, no flights, no phones. You're not figuring anything out till you get there. My dad leaves them there. Sorry, did I say my parents took them to the airport? I mean, my dad took them to the airport. My dad leaves them there, never saw them again. Heard through the grapevine that they they got divorced a year later. Still don't know what the fuck her problem was, but the assumption, I guess, is that her husband was hitting on my mom that night or something. She was nuts, who knows? Anyway, that's the story of my mom's maid of honor. Isn't that juicy? <laughs> this gets to her, what was your problem, bitch? The fact that this tea is 35 years old and relatable to a lot of the story times that we have nowadays. <laughs> oh, goodness. Let's be honest, the silent treatment is not supposed to be used by adults. It's a childish thing. Grow up. I'm going to tell a story that I've never fucking told anyone before. You're just going to have to sit there and listen because it's fucked. But one day I'm at the mall with my friend and I really need to take a piss. So I'm like, let's go to the bathrooms. And we walk over to the bathrooms, and they're two single-use bathrooms. One men's and one women's. I'm like, I'm gonna go to the men's bathroom because that's where I belong. So I walk into the bathroom, and it has one of those buttons on the door that, that, like, you know those little fucking buttons that have a red light or a green light around it? You press it to lock it, and it turns red? I pressed that motherfucker, and it was not locking. So I told my friend, guard the door with your life because it's not locking, and I don't want anybody to walk in here. So I started taking my piss. And keep in mind, my back is turned to the door. So I can't see the door because I'm taking a piss. And for anyone who wants to know, it felt fucking incredible. It was one of those long ones. Anyways, listen, that's besides the point. I'm taking my piss and I hear the door open. And I can't see the door, so I assume it's my friend walking in. Because I told him to guard the door, so who else is gonna fucking walk in? So, I let out a moan, bro. I let out a fucking moan, bro. For any, listen, for the guys out there, you know, okay? You know this is normal. This is perfectly fine, okay? I let out a fucking moan because it's my friend, right? Right? But I didn't hear anyone respond. So I turn around. Still mid piss, by the way, and it's a fucking 50, 60 year old fucking Indian guy, bro. It's not my friend. He wasn't my friend. We interlock eyes, bro. We interlock eyes. It was so quiet and I just fucking screamed. I didn't know what to do, bro. I screamed. My friend had to know. This was a distress call. This wasn't no regular ass fucking scream, okay? I was fighting for my life in there because what the fuck was I supposed to do? There was still a stream steady coming out into that fucking toilet. And I'm interlocked eyes with a fucking guy 40 years older than me, bro. Eventually, he starts walking backwards slowly outside of the door, still facing me as if it's some type of fucking uh, cinematic fucking display here. As if if he turns his back, I'm going to shoot him or some shit. I'm still taking my piss. He walks outside. And I finish taking, you know, doing my thing. And I'm like, how the fuck do I spin this? 
So I sit in the bathroom for about 10 minutes, thinking about what the fuck am I going to do? And eventually I pick up my shit and I'm like, listen, I'm, I'm going to get my shit together and I'm going to walk out. So I walk out and he's still there, bro. I thought he was going to leave. So I sprinted. I ran my ass out of that fucking mall and I never came back. Oh, it sounds like you made a friend. <laughs> He probably walked away slowly facing you because he didn't want you to pee on him. <laughs> now that I'm thinking about my Rogaine era, it's got me thinking about other eras. And I'm just going to share this because this is so funny. So one of my roommates gets COVID, right? Roommate, friend, whatever you want to call her. So obviously she's quarantined. She can't come out of her room. She's bored to death texting us, like inventing things in her fucking room. And I catch her one day walking into her room with, like, a bunch of tins of cat food. I'm like, Lizzie, you don't have a cat, babe. The cat's out here. What are you doing with that? This girl is one of the funniest motherfuckers I've ever met in my life. She's one of my best friends. I can't. So a couple days go by after I watched her bring cat food into her room. I've got no idea what she's doing with it. And I'm hanging out with my ex, who also happened to live next door. Their house parking lot or driveway, whatever you want to call it, was right next to my house. So I get in the car with him and he goes, bro, these birds are shitting crazy. Like their shit is so intense and so green and like awful color. We don't know what's going on with them, but it's we think it's ruining the paint on our cars. And the pieces aligned. I sat there like this. Should I tell him? Should I not tell him? Anyways. <laughs> so I go home and I tell my friend that she's ruining the paint on my ex's car, who was not my ex at the time, and all of his roommates. And she looks at me and goes and grabs more cat food. <laughs> she was so hyped that she was, like, fucking with these guys that this eventually translated to her buying, like, $500 worth of power tools, setting up a disco ball and a bird feeder on our balcony, and trying to build an army of crows. Basically, what I'm saying is that I want to be Lizzie when I grow up. <laughs> that was epic. That was so funny. Yo, an army of crows. I want to be Lizzie, too. Can I do that? <laughs> I love how it transitioned from pigeons to crows. <laughs> And let's be honest, we all know how that COVID went. You were bored out of your mind. At least she found something to entertain herself with. Leave this shit. What's up? My name's Sammy. I'm a topless maid here in Tampa Bay and Orlando, Florida, which means, yes, I clean houses with my titties out. So I went to a regular of mine this morning. I've had troubles in the past with his overbearing mother, Linda. He knows that I clean his house topless on the weekly. She sent me a really lovely email a while back uh, telling me essentially how she cleans her son's house on the weekly, which why the fuck are you cleaning your grown ass son's house on the weekly? And then she shamed me for being in the business that I'm in. Also told me that she would report my business to the police because it's prostitution, which it's not, but that's neither here nor there. So I get there this morning and lo and behold, the police are there. I cannot make this up. So I bring my security guy, Joe, with me. We're just looking at each other as we pull up into the driveway, like what the fuck happened? We didn't think that this was for me at first. I thought something had happened to him, my regular. And we both get out of the car and walk up and the police comes out the front door. Linda comes trailing behind them. She looks at them, points her fucking finger at me and says, that's the one officer. That's the one who is stealing from my son. Stealing! She accused me of stealing. One of the police officers takes me by his car to talk privately. And Joe goes off and talks with the other one. I just wanna say these cops were super fucking cool. Guys like, hey, so we got a call. Uh, this lady's saying that you're you're the housekeeper and that you're stealing things. I was just like, well, first of all, where's my client? And he said, oh, he's not here. Apparently, Linda had him go run out and do some errand, and she knew when I was going to be there, and she called the cops in perfect timing so that when I showed up, they would be there, and so would she, and my client wouldn't be. So I'm like, okay, well, let me call my client real quick. So I did. I called him. I was like, hey, this is what's going on right now. He said, oh, my God, like, oh, hold on. Let me come home. And all the while, me and the cop are just like low-key bullshitting. We're just talking about life. Told him about my business. 
thought it was really fascinating. Linda sitting by the front porch with her arms crossed, looking like a pouting child. The client comes home. It's like essentially, what the fuck's going on? And the cop tells him, oh, well, I guess your mother here accused her of stealing. Is that true? He said, the only thing this woman has stolen is my heart. I was touched. And of course, Linda comes running down and says, that's not true. That's not true. She's stealing. I know she is. She's stealing your money. She's stealing your things. And she's prostituting herself. This heifer was acting like I was a whole witch that needed to be burned at the stake. The officers essentially told Linda that since it's not her house, and since that my client vouched for me that I'm not stealing anything, that there was nothing more that they could do. As for me being a prostitute, they had no way to prove that. For all they know, I'm just a cleaning lady who likes to clean houses with her titties out. Shame on you, Linda. You mad? Ah, you couldn't get me this time. And I also gave the officers my business card, just in case, you know. Stay pet. I feel like Linda's real name is Karen. I think she's personally just mad <laughs> that <laughs> her son's giving you attention. Uh, that's just me personally. Can't vouch for her. I don't know her. <laughs> but that is pretty fucking hilarious. <laughs> All right, y'all, that's it for story time. Thank you so much for tuning in. And if you want to see more of my content, be sure to hit that like and subscribe button. Until next time.